as a kid you think you're invincible right and now you as you get older you realize time fleets it goes fast um the business sale has been consuming me now that that's done uh it allows me to focus on my health and focus on pike's peak so going forward uh it's going to be all about getting healthy and getting ready for pike's peak The story um, started when I was eight years old. My family. Sorry. Um, my family was homeless for a little while. And uh, we just got a house, but there was a TV that came in. And on Friday nights, we would watch uh, Star Trek and Dukes of Hazzard. That was, uh, that was a good Friday night for us. It dipped carrots and vinegar. That was what we could afford. And there was a special, and Bobby Unser was on it. And he talked about going up and breaking the record in the quattro. Bobby Unser, very near Glenn Coe. And um, I just turned to my cousin, I said, one day I'm going to do that. And as you grow up, you realize there's just impossibilities in the world, right? And it was a dream. My wife has known that Pike's Peak has been a dream of mine and we just never thought it to be reality. And when it started coming together, I can remember specifically sitting in bed at one night, um, just asking her like, okay, this looks like it's all gonna happen. Are you okay with this? You know, do you, do you have peace about this like I do? I really prayed about a lot, really felt a lot of peace. And she said, well, she says, I, I don't want you to do it. And she says, if I tell you that, are you going to be mad at me? And I said, no. I said, I, I, it'll take me a few days to get over it. I'll have some hurt feelings. But I said, I, I trust you. You know, you and I, me and my wife have been a partner through a lot of things. And, and she said, okay, then I, I don't want you to do it. And she turned over and then about a minute later, she turned around and she said, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. And she says, if you could see, if you were at eight years old and you saw a boy who was home, homeless, didn't have a home, was homeless, and made this promise to his cousin and had all these difficulties through life. And he made his dream come true. She says, do you think that would have given you hope? And I said, yeah. And she said, then you go do it and tell your story. I believe that God gave me this story for a reason, um, set me on this path for a reason. I wanna do all things. And so there's a bobblehead Jesus in my back window. And uh, every time I look at that, it's a reminder why I'm doing it. So excited, today is the big day in which I reveal to you what kind of car am I taking up to race to the clouds. And so right on the other side here, we're gonna take you over and see this beautiful car in the middle of its progress. So just follow me on over. I know what you're thinking, it's not a Ford. And you're right, it's not, it's a Porsche. It's a Porsche GT3 Cup car 997. It's a 2013, but let's look at this bad boy. As you can see, they're in the middle of working on it. So we're gonna fire it up, and when he does that, I wanna show you guys what Kevin did for me on the display. It's pretty flippin' sweet. We're showing him Buddy Christ. I love it. Mary, my wife, uh, helped me name the car. We were looking for a name that meant something and we wanted something with purpose and it's i typically like to name the cars females names and so um its name is bernice and so it means victory all right so here we are um three weeks away from uh pike's peak day so to speak i feel good i feel good about where we're at um to be completely honest with you still feels like a dream i i just wait for someone to wake me up and say okay go to work but uh, we're here, we're three weeks out. Tomorrow morning, Bernice gets loaded in the trailer and she goes off to Colorado Springs. Pike's Peak has been a huge motivator because uh, the treatments I'm going through right now, um, they're all holistic approach, tough. And so there were days, I can remember one Friday, I, I got done with treatment and I called Mary about halfway through it and I wanted to give up. I'm like, it's, this is not worth the way I feel. So, I am uh, at treatment once again here. And um, 
is sucking this morning. <clears throat> it's not fun. Um, but I do know I need to do this for kicking this cancer. Um, I don't, it's funny, like I don't know why, but it just plays tricks with my mind. Um, just a lot of stupid stuff, like I don't really want to go through with this. And uh, you know, I just stopped feeling sorry for myself, but she's, you know, my wife, she's like, remember what you're working for, you know, you want to be here, you got Pike's Peak you got to train for, so even when I didn't feel like going going downstairs and working on the weights and, and walking and running on the treadmill and, and doing my core workouts, I still did them. I, um, I really want to beat this. This life is fleeting. <laughs> it's so quick. Remember my parents telling me that? And I can't believe how quickly it's gone. And, um, I'm looking forward to many years, so I'm going to kick this, and we're going to move on. But um, I think this race has really made me face my mortality, too, because, you know, the urgency for me doing it this year is um, just wanting to get it done this year while I still am healthy enough to do it and able to do it. There's always hope, right? Um, there's always hope. When you start to question everything you know Don't let go We're here. We're here in Colorado Springs. You know, we, we yeah. talked about doing a, you know, a, a unique, fun little project and then it just escalated and escalated and escalated and, um, and we're here, right? right. Uh, and it's, the next three weeks are going to be hard. I mean, the last six months have been hard. The next three weeks are going to be really hard. I mean, early mornings, late nights, but this is the stuff we love. Because the road's um, owned by the city of Colorado Springs, we rent it for one day. And so no competitor gets a chance of the full run until race day, which is just kind of insane if you actually think about it. So um, you get one shot, you'll have one shot, you know, you'll have your practice days and, you know, you get to do it in sections. Basically, the, the practice days, we split the mountain into thirds. Whatever group is in the, in the bottom section the first day, that would be their qualifying day, okay? And then the next day, they would go to the middle section and the top group would come down, and so that would be their qualifying day. So if they just rotate between those three days and, and your day in the bottom section is when you have to qualify. So it's uh, about 2.10 in the morning. First morning of Pikes Peak practice. And uh, I'm heading downstairs to meet the guys. Um, I don't think, I don't think reality set in yet for me. I think the fact that uh, the rainbow showed when we rolled, rolled her into the, the trailer is probably a good sign. All right, so it's about 3.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. Um, as you can see, we're getting the pits ready. Woo! It's that kind of morning. This is our first time out here. We've never been out here. None of the tuners have been here, Kelly Moss, myself. And I'm getting to a point now where I can run about two thirds of the course through my mind, which is good, but not where I was hoping to be. But you know, I'm, I'm getting older. Uh, it definitely feels like a dream. And I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna lie to you, every time I come down, I get emotional. It's just hard. You get this beautiful landscape that opens up around the corners. And uh, I just, I always picture a little eight-year-old Don, you know, just, you can have dreams no matter where you came from, right? And so, don't give up hope. I think of all the things I heard through my life, you know, you're retarded, you don't amount to anything. You know, my parents were really good. They did a good job of instilling work, work ethic in me, but there were a lot of times where I wanted to give up hope, you know, and just forget about it. <laughs> Cling to the cross and, and keep pushing on. This is definitely the pinnacle of my life uh, as far as racing goes. It's the day before tire test number two. We're talking about getting 
Bernice packed up and what we had to do to get that done. And the next thing you know, there was a double rainbow in the sky again. We're going to be practicing the top section, and we've got basically three things we really want to go after. One is obviously making sure I feel familiar with the hill. The second is Kevin's got some new, uh, new programming he's dumped in that we really want to take advantage of and test. And then lastly, just making sure that we get our rhythm and, and that we don't see any unforeseen. So that's why we do this. Here we are, here we go, never gonna slow down. You know, I've raced a lot of things, but man, I, I cannot tell you. I think for me especially, it's probably super exciting, magnified, right? Because number one is I'm driving up this magnificent mountain and the view is amazing. so many breathtaking parts of the racetrack. And so you're going fast, you're feeling the G's, the car setting, it felt so good. You're on that gas. And some of my, my favorite part of that whole racetrack is the W's. We're gonna set the world on fire. We're gonna set the world on fire. And it's just you, the mountain god. Heaven soldiers. She was a good car up on the hill. Uh, definitely made a lot of progress uh, as far as the tunes and just the overall performance. Um, Bernice, again, she's getting her checkup. Uh, I'm gonna make sure everything's good to go with her and that she's ready for a week long of practice and qualifying. I'm, <laughs> I'm just nervous, but I'm excited. The very first thing I said to Andy was, I'm sorry, you know, like, it's, <laughs> it's one thing to have a dream, right? And not that the dream was ruined at that moment, but honestly, what ran through my head was, I didn't know why it did it. And so first thing that went in my mind is I screwed up. It's bad. I went up, I'm not down, but, When Don got on the radio, you know, my, my, my heart sank. Not good. Not good, buddy. <laughs> All Andy kept saying is, are you okay? Are you right side up? I'm right side up. I'm up on the left bank after bottomless pit. You know, it was terrifying because the radio reception isn't very good, you know, in, in that area, you know, the elevation changes and um, so his message was kind of broken, um, but he was talking to me, you know, so that was the most important thing, that he was safe and it was okay. The rest of it, you know, the car is a tool, you know, it's just an instrument for, for getting him up the top, um, but we only got one down. Those guys, these guys, KMR, 
my guys, just everybody, and especially like Jameson and Andy and and Dog and Kevin, all these guys have just put so much of their time and their life into the car. The mountain bit us, you know. It was not not anything mechanically that happened, nothing that you can even fault Don for, for doing. The data traces show that he didn't do anything different than the last time he went through there, and the car didn't do anything different than the last time he went through there. Um, just unfortunate. She snapped, like now, um, hard right. Uh, I gave it a moment of throttle um, and realized I was pointing at the cliff. And so at that point, you let go of everything. I shoved the clutch in, I uh, hit the brakes, and we hit the, hit the wall of the mountain, um, I think at about 60 miles an hour. Unfortunately, with a Porsche, everything's back there. I had two things happen, one today and one yesterday, and, and my daughter, ah, oh, jeepers. My daughter, before I even knew I crashed, Uh, just uh, sent me a text message. Just tell me how proud she is of me. And uh, the last line in it was, it doesn't even matter if you don't finish, Dad. I'm really proud of you. And then uh, another one was today when I woke up. I'm the pastor. I pastor with John Lewis. He's like my best friend. And uh, he just sent me some scripture from Isaiah. And he always had this picture. He says, every time I prayed for you, it was like David and Goliath. He says, Goliath was the hill and you were David. He says, you're going to beat it. And uh, he just reminded me that of this morning. And maybe, maybe the hill wasn't the Goliath. Maybe it's his health, right? But uh, to me, I thought a lot of people would think this was just stupid, right? That Don, Pastor John, Don is just going out doing something really stupid. But I think those messages kind of just helped. Just a lot of them just saying you were brave enough to take on your dream. Really easy for me to just want to give up, I think. Even before we got to this point, I mean, there were a few times along the way But how many people give up on their dream? It's just hard. You know, worked hard. Um, all the guys from Kelly Moss put in a ton of work. All my friends, you know, Brandon and Aaron and Jack that took their time to come out here. Um, just tough, man. It's so tough. I feel like I've let down my team. Um, I'm not sure what I could have done different, if anything. Bernice is a good car. Um, the fact of the matter is we just can't get it done in a lot amount of time. The one thing I love about the PPIHC community and the event people are everybody was calling around looking for cars for me. They knew this dream. Um, uh, they knew how much it meant to me. and. Uh, Andy kind of presented me with the options, um, talked about it, prayed about it, and at the end I decided not to go. I, you know, I set out on this. I felt like our first step was to take Time Attack 1. That was kind of what I saw run when I was a kid. That was kind of the class that I saw Bobby go up in, and that's what I wanted to attack. And the goal I wanted to do was with my team, so while I could have done it in a div different division with other people. And I am, I'm super thankful and, and happy that other people were willing to give me their cars and let me use them and other teams. But we set out on this and I felt like the journey, if I'm gonna complete this dream of actually racing in Pikes Peak, it needs to be with Bernice and the team that we've, you know, our team of misfits as we call them together on top of that hill. We got an eye in a well, don't ask for help. Just grit our teeth and do it ourselves. There's some things we can't do on our own. <laughs> I want that legacy to live that God put this together and, and win Cochran the Mountain because, you know, if, if my health is 
worse next year and I can't do it. You know, I, I want to put Jeff Swart in a car, and I promise you Jeff Swart will break every record underneath the sun in, in Bernice. He could have done it this year, <laughs> and she'd probably be in one piece. This is where God called me. If this is the end of it, if it was, I went on a high note, <laughs> you know? I made a splash, but uh, I got to do something I never thought I would. I got to race a car up Pikes Peak during practice. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty cool. So I'm here in uh, Porsche Colorado Springs pit. They let me roam around here, but uh, this morning they made my day. So I'm trying not to get emotional while saying this, but they, uh, or let me ride with them today, so on David Donahue's car. So I'm super excited about that. The cars look good, I think everybody's ready. Uh, we're just praying that they have a good day. There's David. Bernice and I will be back. I'm gonna get these health issues things squared away. And we're gonna be back to live and fight another day. So uh, this is just the start of the journey, this whole beginning. Um, it's great to live for a dream, but our journey will still be here. I know God can work this and this can continue. And my story just doesn't end here. But my story, I think is the fact that Dreams are sometimes worth living. Giving peace to those who draw near in the eyes of your people. Turn yourself to us Come and whisper secrets of your word Burn our worries to dust Until your voice is the only thing heard For when you speak, you hear every fear 